Okay, so here we are. So let's begin as we normally do, moving through all the joints. So we're going to roll out the shoulder joints here. Rolling out shoulder joints. And you can see from the side, I'm making as big a circle as I can make, and then I'm crunching in, rounding down my upper back, and then opening the chest as I come down the spine. So I'm really moving these shoulder joints and my upper back. Okay, so I'm make that as big as possible. Good. One more. And then let's switch directions. Roll shoulders forward. And then we're done with that. So now let's circle the hips. And in this class, there is no getting it wrong or getting it exactly right. We're here to flow and play. And uh, so don't worry about so much about getting it exactly right. But I am going to go through today because I have a few new people in class. I'm going to go through a little bit more of the postural alignment stuff. And let's switch direction now. Just the very basics. Not like in a classical Tai Chi class where they posturally align you to death. So we're just going to get the basic guidelines of that. Good, so now we'll move down to the knees. So bring feet closer together and then circle the knees. Now you can start out with really small circles, right? It depends on your knees, the range of motion and your limitations. So you could start with really small circles and make them bigger and bigger. The idea behind this is that we move our knees through positions that we wouldn't move them in standard exercise because we protect them so much. Good. Now let's switch directions. But this is how we move in real life. Our knees don't move in a very linear fashion. When we turn or we climb stairs, all sorts of lateral motion happens in the knees. So here we're making that happen. Good. Now let's come back up and we'll go to ankles. So I'm going to keep my toe down, circle my knee, circle my ankle. And I'm trying to make this a smooth circle, right? I'm trying to make this a, not a hexagon, not an octagon. And the more you do it, of course, the smoother it gets. And then we'll switch directions. Ankle is relaxed, so it goes into flexion extension. Okay, good. Now let's switch sides. Yeah, and we're trying to just keep it smooth, right? You may feel it's a little bit jerky. It's not like a perfect circle. That's okay. Eventually, we'll get there. That's a mind-body thing, a neuromuscular thing. Got a long way to connect your brain to those muscles down there, so it doesn't necessarily work as quickly or as easily as you think it should. 
Smooth, perfect circles with the heel. Now let's switch directions. Good, good. Okay, so now go back up to the knees, one foot forward, one foot back, and then sit on the back leg, lean on that back leg. Relax my front leg, let the knee straighten, just let it be, but don't flex the thigh. And then rub that kneecap. Move it up and down, move it left and right, move it in circles. And then we'll switch sides. Good. Now let's come on up to the upper body. So I'm going to get into a close here so you can see me. And you're going to make a figure eight with the fingertips. External rotation, thumbs out. Internal rotation, thumbs in. Just a figure eight. And we're following the fingertips, keeping the arms round. It's not a huge circle. It's not going way out to the side. Right. So just... Scooping, diving around. So we're working the rotator cuffs here. We're also working the forearms because the forearms rotate, but the wrists don't actually rotate. So rotator cuffs, internal rotation, external rotation. Four tiny, weak, tight muscles in each shoulder that need to be released and strengthened, and that's what we're doing. Now let's switch directions. So I'm going to wipe, and then curl over, and then wipe, and curl over. And if you're just making circles with your hands, that's okay too, right? We just, you'll get there. Don't expect you to pick up everything. So we move through all the joints. And this is called Dao Yin, Taoist Yoga or Dao Yin. These are ancient exercises that preceded Indian Yoga in China. Couple more, figure eight. And they're used as warm-up exercises for Kung Fu exercise, for Kung Fu and practice and Tai Chi practice. So now, I'm going to take my knee, lift the knee, relax the ankle, just make a circle and put it down gently. Lift and gently put it down over here. I'm going corner to corner. And you can lift it as high as you want, right? If you don't have the greatest balance, then you'll probably make a small circle. If you have better balance, range of motion, you may make a larger circle. You decide. The goal is to put it down gently, not fall onto it. Smooth and slow. Good. A couple more. Last one, and relax. Now I'll bring my arms in front like zombie arms. One goes up, one goes down. 
Then we switch them again, but on the sides. And then we switch them in front. And then on the sides. And then in front. And you can go this as fast or as slow as you like. I'm trying to relax my shoulders down when I'm doing this, right? So I'm not like reaching up. I'm just relaxing down as I do it. Wax on, wax off. Flexion, extension of the wrists. Nice and relaxed. And of course, if you have shoulder issues, you could be making small circles like this and getting bigger and bigger until eventually you find your maximum range of motion. If you don't have any shoulder issues, you could go behind your back with the arms, right? Your choice. We're just making circles. And then we'll switch directions. So back to center, zombie arms, and then switch in the front and to the side. So one's actually doing backstroke and one's doing crawl or freestyle. It's a little, really, it's a brain exercise as much as anything. Left brain, right brain. Couple more. Good, good, and relax. Now, I'm gonna bend my knees, keep my heels down, and start to swing. Let my arms relax, and my arms just, my hands just swing back and slap my sides. I'm not making it happen with my arms, they're just asleep. That's my waist. My heels stay down, my knees stay bent to protect the lower back. I just rotate through the spine from the waist up. In Tai Chi, we generally rotate from the waist up. General rule of thumb. Now I'll turn my toes out as I do this. So turn one foot out, turn the other foot out. One foot out, other foot out. One foot out, other foot out. So I get external rotation in the hips. And then once we've done this, we'll be done and we'll move on to the Tai Chi Tai Chi instead of the Dao Yin. Good, now heels out. So to internal rotation on the thigh, swing the heel forward to keep the toes down. Arms completely relaxed, couple more. And last one. And right there, relax. I'm just gonna do a bear with me while I do a minor wardrobe adjustment here. A little warm. And so let us play. So we'll start with feet together. Feet together. And arms by the sides. I'm making this sort of slight circle with my arms. You can see it's imagine I have a golf ball in my armpit and maybe a tennis ball between my elbow and my ribcage. And from here, I'll inhale and the arms float up. Show elbows stay lower than the shoulders. Hands float in and they melt down. It's called sinking the chi. Inhale, arms float and exhale down. Keep going, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Nice. Good. From here, we'll step this left foot out. Toes reach out to the side. Sink down. Heel comes down. Then I shift over, and then my arms float up in front this time. Like I'm painting a door frame with a brush in each hand. Floating up on the inhale. Floating down on the exhale, wax on, wax off. Inhale, exhale. Now keep going. From the side, you can see that as I sit down, I'm not leaning forward. I'm actually tucking my bum underneath and I keep my shoulders over my hips. I'm not actually leaning forward, right? 
It's called opening or commencing or beginning. Sometimes we call it opening the door. As you can see, we're painting that door frame. We'll do one more. Inhale up. Exhale down, sink down into the legs, stay down there. Now I can just swing my hands side to side, maybe step a little wider. Keeping my knees bent, keeping my heels down, not lifting the heel as I shift to the other side. One palm faces the other. And then I'll swing up here and the hand that's following floats up and I read my palms. I come across the face turning to this corner. Paint the corner. Good, switch sides here, reading the other palm. Paint the corner on this side, keep that going. Okay, so I'm making actually a circle with the hands and that circle really is created by the body turning. You can see I'm turning from corner to corner. I'm not actually moving just my arms corner to corner. All right, I'm rotating through the waist. My elbow stays below my shoulder. I'm reading that palm and my fingers are together, but not touching. One hand is below the other. This is called cloud hands. Wave hands like clouds, shift. Now add a little bit more shift in there and lead with your back, rotate. Lead with your back, back of the shoulders lead. Hands follow. I can feel my heels rooted down, right? I'm rooted into the floor. Couple more cloud hands. Now over to this side, and we'll hook five fingertips, touch the wrist hooks, elbow stays bent, and then this hand keeps going. Read your palm and press. Scoop, turn to this corner, and then throw that hand across in slow motion and press. Again, the fingers are straight, but they're not stiff. And they're not completely bent and relaxed. There's a little bit of energy through those fingers. You can see as that I shift and when I rotate, it starts in my feet, goes up the leg, across the waist to the arm, comes off this foot, up across. So it's not a stiff movement, right? It's a very loose, relaxed movement. We'll do one more like this. One more single whip, scooping, wave, read your palm, wave. Now we'll stay here, sink in. Sink into these, uh, the, the front leg here, keep the back heel down, the knees are bent, tailbone slightly tucked, and then the elbows relax down below the shoulders. Imagine you're a spring, somebody pushes in and you bounce back out, right? You want this springy sensation. Now this back hand scoops back into cloud hands. Read your palm. Read the other palm. And if you're going to the right, your right hand is on top. And if you're going to the left, your left hand is on top. Hand comes up almost vertical. And I'm reading my palm. Corner to corner, shift, use the waist. We'll move over to single whip on the other side in a sec. Now, here we go, over to single whip. So the five fingertips touch, the wrist hooks, shoulders relax down, and then keep going with the other hand. Wave, swing, and wave. Inhale, turn, now lead with the back, exhale. Leading with my back, turning, wave. Again, okay, don't worry about getting it just right. I'm giving you the cues, but if you don't get them all, that's okay. The idea is to move, breathe, flow, and play, and relax. Do less. A couple more cloud, uh, sorry, a couple more single whips here. You can see this ends up actually looking a little bit like a whip. Snap with the fingers. Last one here. Shift, turn, throw it across, wave, and sink in. Shoulders down, elbows down. Just get a feel for floating here. It's called song. Right? We just sink in, but we float. We're rooted down. And then we'll come back to center. 
Allow the hands to drop. Inhale back to the beginning, sinking the chi. Exhale down. Open the door in front. Arms float up in front. Paint the door frame. And down. We'll swing side to side. Challenge the balance now. So inhale up. Exhale. The slower you breathe, the slower you move. And the smoother you breathe, the smoother you move. And in Tai Chi, we breathe and move smoothly and slowly. We never stop moving. Right? There is no stopping. Good. Now one hand will swing forward, and the other hand will land on a table next to our hip, an invisible table. So this back hand swings forward, and this hand lands on the table. And then switch. And switch. And switch. Good. Now the knee is going to follow that hand up. So I shift over, lift my knee, touch knee to elbow, maybe. Down, reach out with the toes, no weight on it. Then slowly put weight on it, then switch. Stand up tall, knee towards the elbow. Down, reach, and switch. So I want to keep the hands moving. And I want to keep the feet moving. And it doesn't matter how high you lift your knee. Right? If you have balance issues, you could just tap your toe in front in what we call an empty step. That's fine too. Right? Or you could just lift up to hip level. Or if you want a bit more, lift up to touch the elbow. And the ankle is relaxed. I'm not lifting my ankle like in Chen style. I'm just relaxing down. Up lifting the toes. And this one is the golden rooster. Stands on one leg. Reach out. Don't worry about what you cannot do. Hands haven't changed. They're still in that extended position. Golden rooster. Strike to the groin. Strike to the nose. Strike to the eyes. Strike to the throat. Whatever you want with the hand. Let's do one more each side. We'll hold this next one for a sec. Float up and hold. Breathe. Nice. Switch sides. Gently down. Up and hold. Hug the tree. Put that foot down. Sink the chi. Inhale. Exhale down, flexion extension of the wrist. Open the door in front, commence. Swing side to side. Now we're gonna hold the ball, and hold the ball on each side, embracing the moon. So I'm holding a beach ball in front of my body. One hand in front of the throat, other hand in front of the belt buckle. And notice on that top arm, my elbow is down, relaxed. I'm not lifting my arm, it's down and relaxed. Always relaxed. Good. Now we'll throw in a parting the wild horse's mane. So from this side here, top hand drops down onto the table. And the other hand is like I'm throwing my hat into the corner. And then I'll circle my hands around, wind up again, position one. And throw my hat as I put my top hand down on the table. And wave. Now I'm going to add in a T step. So, T step this foot, no weight on it. Step out heel, toes shift, throw your frisbee, throw your hat. Inhale. Exhale. When I shift in, I'm not letting that front knee go beyond the base of the toes. I'm keeping weight on the heel. Let's do two more. Exhale. Wind up. Inhale. Smooth, gentle breath. Low in the legs. Exhale. We'll stay here on this one. Find this position. There's my palms, like I'm offering something to someone, and this hand's on the table next to my hip. Both knees are bent, both heels are rooted down. I'm not leaning forward, I'm not sticking my bum out. I'm trying to get my pelvis and neutralize that, right? Keep my pelvis neutral. And then we'll swing side to side. 
The swing is just a transitional move. Hold the ball here, embrace the moon. One more time each side. Now we'll part the wild horse's mane on this side. So over to here, top hand drops down onto the table. This hand throws the frisbee. See how it's my body that's turning. Scoop wind up to this corner, shift over and then throw, throw, throw. It's not an arm movement much. My arm is really just going up and down in front of me. It's a turn of the body as I lift my arm. That's making the arm go across. It's adding a T-step. Empty step, bow step, and throw that frisbee. Or throw the hat, whatever you want to throw. Hold the ball, palm is up on that bottom hand. One palm down, one palm up, yin and yang. Let's do a couple more. I'm winding up to throw. Inhale. Exhale, let's do one last time, because so I like this move, obviously. Inhale, T-step. Exhale, parting horse's mane will sink into this. Knees bent, body upright, arms round and relaxed. So if I were to turn forward, you could see my arms are actually round. I'm not squeezing them in here. I'm not out here. I'm just relaxed down. Okay, then I'll hug the beach ball, I'll hug the tree. And then put it down and sink the T. Inhale. Exhale. Open the door in front. Sit down. Paint that door frame. Swing side to side. So we're going back up into cloud hands again, waving hands like clouds. So on the other side here, I swing up, read my palm that's following, going. Whichever direction you're going, that's the hand that's on top. Going left, left hand up. Going right, right hand up. Shifting and relaxing. And you'll know when you're relaxed. You know when you're getting it because your body will just flow. It won't be like a robot. It won't be robotic. Yeah? More like a dance. Couple more cloud hands, waving hands like clouds which is different from waving hands like clowns. That's very different. And then we'll come halfway across on this one, halfway, and then spread your wings. Top bottom hand on the table, top hand like you're reading a book in the light. And then switch one up, one down. Other hand on the table, arms around. And switch. And switch, gonna add on to it. So I switch. And this toe taps in front. No weight on it, just toe touches down, switch sides. Spread your wings, tap your toe. Spread your wings like the big white crane. A white crane spreads its wings. That's the name of this. Brushing the forearm on the way down, and the one that's going up comes across my face. The wrist comes across my face. Semicircle. Like a half moon shape. It's deflection. White crane spreads its wings. Couple more. Let's do last one like this. Good, now we'll go to the other side and keep the weight on the back foot, keep the toe in front, no weight on it, reach down with that hand to the opposite foot and come on up slowly and switch. Spread your wings and then reach down for the needle at the sea bottom and there's no weight on that front foot. I don't care how low you go, as low as you can comfortably. When up the guidelines are, you only go as low as you can and still smile when you're coming up. If you don't smile when you're coming up, you went too low. So we keep moving. Inhale. Exhale. Reach for that needle. Good afternoon, hamstrings. All right. Come on up. 
and reach. Up. On up. And reach. Come on up. And reach. Needle at the sea bottom. Nice. Come on up, hug the tree. Put it down. Sink it. Inhale. Elbows below the shoulders. Exhale. Open up in front. Inhale. And exhale. Swing it side to side. Yeah, so now I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated. Yeah. This hand, top hand, is going to just hang out, do nothing. The other hand is going to swing up across my face like I'm swatting a fly off my nose. And then turn and wipe the table. Do it again. Shift and turn this way, winding up, swap the fly, and we'll wipe the table. See how the arms round? Right across my nose. Swat. And wipe. Now forget about that hand. The other hand comes up to my shoulder, up to my ear. So I swing it up in a circle. I'm holding a ball in my shoulder. And then fingers lead and then the wrist sinks. I'm not straightening my arm, I'm sinking. Swing it again. And push. Fingertips and wrist. One more time. Swing. And push right past your eyes. Now, Swap the fly again with both hands. Here we go. Swap the fly. One goes down, one goes up. Wipe the table and push. And again, I don't want to go beyond the base of my toes with my front knee. So I shift forward. I don't want to feel pressure on my knee. I'm not going to shift too far. Let's do one more like this. Now we'll add in that T step again. Hands keep going. T step. Swap the fly, one up, one down. Bow step, wipe the table, push. It all happens at the same time. Again, if you are new to this, if this is your first time practicing, don't worry about getting it right. Just swap the fly, step out, and give it a push. Now we'll stay here on this one. This lower hand here is by my hip where it was in Parting Horse's Mane and, and uh, rooster. And this other hand is just like I'm pushing someone. Again, from in front, you can see my arms are round. I'm not down here. I'm not up here. I have my arms are round like I'm becoming a ball, sinking my chest. Back heel is down. Knees are bent. One more breath here and brush knee and push. And we swing. Back and forth. One palm facing the other, yin and yang, one up, one down, one north, one south. One positive, one negative. Good. Now forget about this top hand. Other hand, swats the fly across your nose. Take that fly, swat, and then wipe the table. Turn, turn, turn. Here we go. Shift into that back leg. Turn. Don't lift that back heel as you wipe the table. Keep that back heel rooted down. It's called rooting. Wipe, last one. Forget about that hand. Other hand floats up to the ear. Holds the ball on the shoulder. It's like a round, perfectly round ball, right? Like a soccer ball. A real football. And then push. Sorry, Americans, I had to throw that in there. And then inhale up, hold the ball. Fingers lead and then their wrist sinks. Remember, we're not reaching, we're not leaning. Just slowly bringing that hand forward and sinking it down. And of course, right here, freeze for a sec. There's another ball right there. Okay. Now let's swap the fly. One goes down, one goes up. Wipe the table and push. Inhale. Exhale. You can be as low, your feet can be as wide or as close together as you like, right? Your legs, your knees, your stance. Now you're going to add in the T-step. 
So, T step. Remember when we step out, it's empty. So I put my heel down, there's no weight on it. Then I shift onto it and push. I want to feel a connection between that back leg, that heel rooted down, and my hand that's pushing. Power up the leg, up to the shoulder, to the palm. Let's do another one, we'll stay there. Brush the knee and push. Sink in, relax in. Become a spring, right? Everything should be relaxed. Chest is sinking. I'm not trying to stick my chest out and stand tall. I'm sinking the chest, becoming a ball, lifting my chin. And I just become this like a bouncy ball, right? One of those things that you throw against the wall and it never stops going. And I just so we just sink in. If hug that tree, bring it back to the center, put it down, sink the chin. Open the door, commence, begin. Yeah, here we go, bit of a challenge now, swing it side to side. We challenge the brain, now we'll challenge the balance. Good, so over to this side, and I'm gonna cross my wrists, scooping, and then wave both hands. And scoop over here, wave both hands. It's not a huge wave, right? You scoop. Remember, the elbow doesn't go above the, the shoulder, so it's just gently there. Hands really go in front of the face, and that's about it. Scoop no higher. Where? Remember that everything we do here is involving combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat. So it will be rare in any form of combat that you would reach out like this because you're just open and vulnerable, right? So we... Scoop and wave one more time. Now we're just going to bring the knee, like that rooster, up to the elbow. Scoop. And the knee can, can touch the elbow or it can be underneath it. I don't care. Switch. Scoop. And wave. And I'm lifting the toes on this one, unlike the rooster where my toes are pointing down. Knee. Wave. Keep the wave going. Right? See how the hands want to stop when you lift the knee? Wave. Keep it going. Now we'll kick out to the corner. So I just straighten my leg, press the heel out under the, uh, under the hand. Keep the hands going, scoop, wave. And if you wanna get technical about it, the side that's kicking, that hand goes underneath, that hand scoops underneath. And then it ends up in front, see, as you wave. Then I kick with the other leg, so this one goes underneath, and as I bring my arms up, it ends up in front, and then I wave. This is called kick. Well, it's actually called step up and kick with heel, commonly known as kick. Hard to remember, I know. And again, you can kick as high or low as you want, right? No balance, balance challenged, touch your heel down. A little bit more, you could kick to knee level. A little bit more, have a bit more range of motion. Kick to hip level, it's still under the arm, right? I'm not kicking forwards, I'm kicking to the corner. A little bit more, you'd kick to the rib cage. A little bit more, you'd kick to the chest, or one more, you could kick to the chin. Your choice, right? Where you're kicking, it's your kick. Let's do one more each side. Kick. Scoop. Whole time we haven't stopped moving. Down, hug the tree, put it down, sink the chi. Inhale. Exhale. Let's take a break. We'll move into some qigong exercises here. So I'm going to scoop up the middle. Inhaling as I go, keeping the knees bent, dropping my tailbone, pressing my hands overhead to the ceiling, keeping my elbows bent. And then slowly down to the sides. I can feel a stretch in my fingers as I do that. From the side, it looks, see how my knees are bent? I'm crunching. All right? And I'm sinking the chest, backward pelvic tilt, and then crunching. Inhaling all the way up. Inhale, 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 
exhale. Two palms holding up the heavens like a pillar to harmonize the triple warmers. The triple warmers being your metabolism. Harmonize the metabolism. Breathing in all the way up, so slow the breath. Exhale, breathing out all the way down. You can touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth and lengthen the, the neck, so lift the chin. Imagine your head is floating up like a balloon and everything else is sinking into the ground. Let's do two more. Try just not to hold your breath. Slow the breath, slow the breath, still inhaling, still inhaling, still slowing the breath, still inhaling. Slowly exhale. So the breath starts when the move starts and then ends when the move ends. And then we'll sink the chi. Now I'm going to step a little bit wider, turn my toes out to about 45 degrees into what we call a horse stance. Sink down to my legs. I'm still keeping my body upright. I'm not sinking in like this, okay? Body is upright and my waist is level. My bum bum is dropping underneath. I'm trying to crunch, but I'm not sinking the shoulders forward. I'm just sinking like somebody poked me in the chest. I'm just sinking that chest. Now I'll cross this hand in front of this hand. The wrists cross. This hand, fingers bend, pulls the bowstring. This hand, index finger points to the ceiling, and I draw the bow. Don't lock the elbow. Back to center, other arm in front. Draw the bowstring. Push the bow away. The index finger points to the sky. Feel the stretch in the index finger. Back to center. Now. Shift away from the bow. So pull the string, shift into that side. You could even lean a bit. Back to center. Exhale as we draw the bow. Inhale back to center. Remember not to lock the elbow as you push the bow away. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. I'm going to do a thousand of these on each side. Not really, I'm just kidding. Exhale. Not really. Normally we would do between 8 and 32 times. Why? I have no idea, but we do. 8 to 32, and this comes from these last two exercises come from a series called the Eight Pieces of Brocade. Eight Pieces of Silk. Exhale. Index finger points to the ceiling. Let's do one more each side. Just a little bit of Qigong. Tip of the tongue, roof of the mouth, sink the chest. Last one. Over to this side, pull and push. Back to center, hug that tree, heel toe in a little bit. Put that tree down. Now sink that chi. Open the door. Swing side to side. You know the deal. Transitional move moves us into the next posture or the next move. Now I'll swing my hands over one shoulder, but no higher than the ear, no higher than eye level. Over the shoulder, down in front. And as I do this, I'm not leaning, right? Tendency is to like, lean away from it. Not going to do that. Gonna keep the shoulders level and rotate. One palm facing the other, like I'm holding a basketball in my hands. Now the hand that comes over the shoulder first makes a gentle, gentle fist, very gentle. And then switch. 
turn, rotate, turn, turn, turn. Now you can look at your hands if you want. Now I'll add the knee in. So as I come over this shoulder, that knee makes the circle again. Remember the circle? And gently comes down. And then up over to the other corner. Gently down with the heel first, right? Heel lands first when I'm going forwards. Heel and toe. It's important that you don't drop onto the foot. So even if you don't have the balance, it's important that you work on attaining more balance. This foot is actually a deflection. It's a block. And the arms are a block and a check. Flex downwards and parry. Couple more. Nice, hug that tree. And then put it down, let it sink, let it float. Now sink the chi, inhale. Elbows below the shoulders, relax more, exhale, extend through the fingers. Open the door. And down. Now this hand here, one hand on my waist, this hand's gonna slap. Just swing around in front and slap over the same side leg. Big circle, let it sink, turn, and then swing it. One more. And now we're gonna we'll leave it out there this time so the hand can slap and stay there. Now the other hand is drawing my six gun. Turns up my ribs, makes a fist. As I shift in, it punches past that palm. Palm ends up inside the elbow. Do it again. Swing, draw your gun, up, gentle fist, rotate. You want to feel the back heel rooted to the ground and connected to the knuckles of the fist. Comes up the leg, up through the waist, to the shoulder, to the elbow, to the fist, and the fist is relaxed. One more. Turn, turn, turn. Nice. Now add the slap back in. So as the one hand comes back, the other goes forward. Draw the gun, punch, right past that hand, it's coming back. And then it goes forward and that fist comes back. Deflect downwards, parry, and this one is punch. Let's do one more and we'll stay there. I'm still in that, what we call the bow stance here. My legs look like half of a bow, right? And Palms inside the elbow, shoulders around, chest is sunken, arms around, and the fist is gentle. Sink into this like you're punching right over that foot. Back heel rooted. You can feel the connection between the back heel rooting down, up the leg, into that fist. And then come back to center and just sink the teeth. Open the door. Up in front. Other hand slaps. Swing a one. Fingers together but not touching. Two, just like you were slapping something, right? That's how your hand is shaped. Three, let's do one more. Make sure the back heel stays down. Rotate, swing. Freeze the hand there. Keep shifting though. Other hand up, draw your gun. And punch thumb on top past that palm. Do it again, drop it down, back heel roots, rotate the hips, the waist, and throw that punch forward. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Now let's add the slap back in, so one goes forward, one goes back. One goes back, one goes forward. Rode through that back heel, feel the connection with the knuckles on the fist. One more, we'll stay there on this next one. Sink in. 
Root in, sink. Breathe, relax. Shoulders down, arms round. And hug that tree. You can come back to center, put it down. Sink and see again. Head. Exhale. Open. Good. Now let's sink the chi one more time. Now I'm going to pretend that I'm going to sink the chi, but I'll turn the thumbs down and make that gentle fist again. The arms reach out like the horns of a bull, knuckles almost meeting about the height of your temples, and then down. Do it again. Box the ears, right at about ear level. Thumbs down, arms round. In, so external rotation going down, rotating up. Internal rotation going forward and up. Now let's add in a T-step and a bow step. So T-step to this corner, empty, shift in, bow step. Do it again. Inhale, T-step. Exhale, bow step. Box opponent's ears, or box the ears. Inhale. Exhale. Watch your knee, right? When you sink back there, you don't have to sink too low. Keep that weight rooted down in the heel. Let's do two more. And I'm shifting and moving the arms at the same time. So I, nothing happens first, nothing happens last. It all goes together and free, freeze right here, sink. It's almost like I'm hugging a tree with the Outside my forearms, man. Box the ears up by eye level, ear level. And then just relax the hands down. T step the other side, other corner. Here we go. Box the ears. Inhale, T step. Exhale, bow step. Back heel rooted. I know you want to lift the back heel. I can feel it. Don't do that. Hard to stop two strikes coming at once. Let's do one more. We'll stay there. Sink. Gentle fist. So I can put a thumb inside my fist. That's how gentle they are. Couple of breaths, shoulders down. Try not to lift the shoulders up and stress your shoulders out. Relax them down. Relax the elbows down. Then hug the tree, come back to center, put it down. Sink the chi. Good, now we'll cross the wrists. So I'm gonna scoop up the middle, about shoulder height. And then allow the wrists, to, the palms to float down as they sink down, the hands land on the table. And then I'll scoop. And sink. And remember, as we sink down, we're not leaning forward. The body is upright. A little bit of a crunch. Scooping. So kind of the arms are round in front. Always round. There's always a ball. We'll talk about that in a sec. Two more. Neck, chin floating up, head floating up. Everything else sinks into the floor, becomes grounded. Good. We'll stay tall on this one. Don't sink down. A bit late, late cue there. Hands come, tip of the big finger touches the outside of your leg, and then slowly step in. Now we'll sink the chi again three times. And relax. And shake it all out. Good, good. So let's work a little bit on, on posture alignment. So I'm going to stand sideways for you. I'm going to sink into my legs, keep the weight 
between the ball mounts and the heels, but make sure that my knees don't go in front of my toes, right? Then, as you can see from my waistband here, I am going to crunch a little bit. I'm going to sink down. I'm not going to stick my bum out. I'm going to do the opposite, backward pelvic tilt, which sinks my chest. But as I sink my chest, I don't want my shoulders to hunch forward like I'm squeezing something. I'm just sinking the chest like somebody poked me in the sternum or poked me in the solar plexus with a finger, and I sink. And I'll keep the arms round here. And you can see when my arms are round, if I tip forward, you can see that they're really round. It's like I'm holding a ball, like I'm holding a beach ball in front of me or hugging a tree. All right? And the elbows are down and the shoulders are down, relaxed. And the fingers, as you can see here, are together but not touching. Put them over here, you can see better. Together but not touching. And they're straight but not stiff. Right? I'm not asleep and I'm not stressing. I'm just in between. So I'm really becoming that ball. Push the sink of the chest in. Now from here, the, the, imagine that you're suspended from the crown of your head. Imagine you're a puppet. You have a string from, coming from the crown of your head up to the ceiling. So the neck lengthens, the chin, head, and the crown of the head floats up. But everything else sinks down, right? And so everything we do has this circle. If I'm going into brush knee push, I'd have one foot forward, of course, but I would have one hand in push, but my arm is still in the same place. See, from here to here. And the other hand would be down there. That was my brush knee push, swat the fly, that one, right? I just turn my palm in, bring this hand up, turn the palm in. The arm didn't really move. There's a little bit of flexion extension in the elbow, but really it doesn't move. Parting horse's mane, same thing. This one goes into push, goes by my hip. This one turns up, parting horse's mane. So we're always in this position. I'm never over here, never over here. Can't protect yourself over here. I want to sink in. In fact, this is a position called wuji, the void. And it's a very, very challenging Qigong posture, um, uh, Zhang Zhuang, a standing Qigong posture, right? That uh, a lot of Chinese doctors will have you hold, practice this until you can hold it for hours and hours. You want to find a place with those legs that it's not killing you, like your legs aren't shaking, that you're not locked and you're not way down low. You're just unlocked and tuck your bum and sink. Crown of the head floats up. So this is Wu Ji. The void. And then we'll release down, shake it out. And there you have it.